Well, to debate this subject, we've got three guests on today's Newsmakers. In Kuwait, we have Dr. Fahda Shalemi, the head of the Gulf and Security Forum. Standing by for us in Washington, D.C., is Colonel Cedric Layton, who's a defense consultant and a former deputy director of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And in London, we've got the columnist and commentator, Kian Mukhtari. Gentlemen, thanks all of you for joining us. Um, uh, Fahda Shalemi, why are the Gulf countries stocking up on weapons as if there's about to be a major showdown? Thank you for having me. Uh, best regard to your guests. Uh, I, I, I think the tension between the Iranian and us is uh, creating a state of uh, fear, if I may say it. Uh, we, uh, the, uh, our allies, United States and the West, since 1995, they keep telling us, you are under the threat from the Iranian ballistic missiles, and you need to counter this threat. You need to buy armament. Uh, suddenly, by 2015, we were surprised that is Iran and pl 5 plus 1 and the West and our friends, they were uh, warning us from Iran. They were playing the same sheet of music. Uh, but mainly, uh, we have a, a good diplomatic relationship with the Iranian, but we uh, do not uh, feel uh, comfort from their uh, in intervention in our internal affairs, such as uh, Bahrain, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and if you go to the regional, you could see an Iranian intervention in Iraq, and many Iraqi politicians say that. Uh, you can go to Syria, you, you could see uh, Hezbollah in, in Lebanon. Mainly, we hear uh, very good words well, on the diplomatic well. arena, but we did not hear okay. any uh, uh, good Dr. Shalami, intention Dr. Shalami, from if, uh, sorry religious. To Sorry to interrupt you. you. You feel the United States has let you down. Then how come it's spending, oh, how come it's selling all these weapons to the Gulf states? You know, today we just heard the U.S. announced it's selling Saudi uh, $11.25 billion in combat ships. Saudi Arabia alone uh, has got over $100 billion worth of weapons transfers from the United States since 2011. Is the U.S. playing both sides? What's going on? I think, uh, I think the problem is in the Obama administration, and uh, there is such a call, uh, United States interest. I'll give you an, a notice on that. Uh, since uh, 2010 until 2015, we uh, took armament, 372 billion, as the Gulf states, from United States and our allies. And these kind of weapons were designed to counter the Iranian threat according and based on the U.S. advice. Uh, in fact, uh, now they are advising us to buy an air uh, defense missiles against ballistic missiles uh, to counter the Iranian threat. Uh, and, and I think the most important threat is now the intervention in our internal affairs by our neighbors, the Iranian. Oh, and when okay, I say the Iranian, I don't say, so I don't the mean Americans the Iranian people, I mean the, the Iranian cliff, regime. Will you who jump off the cliff. Okay, fair enough. Let's bring in Kian Mukhtari. Kian Mukhtari essentially at the genesis of uh, Fahda Shalemi's fears and many others in the region is that the Iranians will use the platform of the nuclear deal and all the money that comes with it for empire building. What do you think of that? Well, you know, um, I have to, first of all, I have to put the gentleman right. If the Americans say jump off a cliff, is he likely to jump off a cliff? Um, we take great interest in Kuwait, given um, what happened to um, uh, to communities outside of Islam at the hands of ISIS, uh, which is quite clearly Saudi-backed and Turkish-backed. Um, you know, we, we uh, do, we, we, we tend to be quite calm people. We, we don't really want to go around slashing people's throats and raping people and selling them in, as sex slaves here, there, and everywhere. There's a disparity in cultures, as Iran being essentially in the European culture, and Arabs, uh, and in my opinion, Arab people are too far north. Arabia, the boundaries of, is Saudi Arabia. I'm not talking about countries that were Arabized, brutalized in the name of Islam. And yes, we do take interest in Kuwait because uh, some of the events there then relate to the well-being of the people, Shia people, under, pro under protection of Tehran, and Tehran is duty-bound with them. Now, the last person, um, to attack Kuwait wasn't us. It was actually Saudi-backed 
Saddam Hussein who attacks you at Kuwait. So you better go buy different equipment because you're more likely to be attacked by one of your own than Iranians. We're trading people. We trade with people, and in time we develop political ties. But you know, we are we are highly cultured. We've been there seven and a half thousand years, and that is our patch. But Kian, I don't think you've answered my question. Would Iran use the mainstreaming of the nuclear deal and the legitimacy Iran, that comes with it Iran, and the money up to 150 billion dollars for empire building? You, right. Let me tell you this: um, Iranians um, at empire building, you say, well, we have a thing called Iranian plateau, on which people celebrate Iranian. Uh, occasions such as the New Year, such as that they're free, they're, they're, you know, it's a tolerant deal. And they're not, you know, they're not in any way, shape, or form related to the Arab world. So why should they have their throats cut? Why should they? So we, we look after our own. We're not empire building. Well, I mean, you're, well, talk, Iran you're talking about throats being cut. Iran, I, Iran, Iran funds, Iran, sorry to interrupt you, Iran funds and arms it, Bashar al Assad. 300,000 people have died on his watch. Hezbollah, yes, right. Shia militias in Iraq, uh, backing the Houthis in Yemen. There's some very I, legitimate saying, things. I We're don't not agree with that. Here. They have died. They have died in Qatar, on Qatar, on Saudi Arabia's watch, and Turkey's watch. They have not And let me tell you this: 67 percent of the killed are from Alawite, Turkmen, Assyria communities. They're not from the Sunnis. They are brutal. We've seen. The, the doctrines they're putting into practice, the Wahhabis, Salafis. You know, as Iranians, empire building or not, we're peaceful people. We just don't have time for this nonsense anymore. Um, you know, radicalization, you know, getting CIA in there, you know, that, 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 that. Okay. You know, okay, what's wanna, going on? You know, killing people, what's going on? Okay, I mean, I Iranians aren't really Cedric into Layton. that at all. Okay, sorry, Kian. I want to bring in Colonel Cedric Layton. Are we seeing the symptoms of a Gulf? versus Iran Cold War at play. For example, in Yemen, where more than 2,000 people have been killed, many, many civilian, are we going to see more of this play out over the coming months and years? Is there a Cold War? Iran, uh, Imran, I think there, there is a Cold War, and I think it's in places like uh, Yemen, it has gotten into a hot war, and it, also in Syria. So every now and then, this Cold War has flashes of, of hot in it, and that, those flashes are ones that you will see manifest themselves throughout the region. It is a very dangerous time, and I think that is why we are seeing the Gulf states arm themselves to the extent that we're seeing now. It is basically a world records arms race in the effort effort to uh, combat Iranian desires in the region. Has it been triggered by Iranian President Obama's in the strategy, region. Mr. Layton? Iranian desires sorry, in the sorry, region. Sorry, Kian, can, can no I just less. ask Cedric Layton? Not American uh, designers. Okay. Not let me, American let me, desires. Kian, not Kian, Kian, let me ask you. Let me step desires, in here. Is it there? Okay. Do we do I we have a, do we have a do no, we have an aircraft here's, carrier here's capable deal. of destroying a country in your backyard? No, we don't. That's our patch. Le it's our patch, Le sir. But you want to have one. Okay. Now, now all three of you are talking backyard. at the you same time. So, how about Kian? Kian, you've had your say. Kian, you've had your say. Colonel Cedric Layton. Colonel Cedric Layton. Nobody can understand a word if all three of you are talking at the same time. Colonel Cedric Layton, you want to address that? Making empires, sir. Kian, give the man a chance. Here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Anyway, we are having a, a situation where the Iranians oh, have pursued an expansionist policy for many years. They've pursued it when they had the opportunity in Iraq. Uh, they've they were pursuing it in <laughs> Syria. They are certainly pursuing it in Yemen. And this is what we're seeing. So the <laughs> Gulf states are naturally <laughs> going to react to it. I and they're the going signal. to try they are going to try to Sorry, make this happen. Am I, am I having a tough time keeping a straight face to this claim? Sir, you're from the United States and before that That's you're true. from Europe. Now, okay, the United States, fine. You know, you kill 70 million people, you raise a flag, and you go around the world, and you want to own everything. And we are expansionists. What 70 million people are where you talking we, about? Where do we have, that is complete nonsense. Where do nonsense. we have 100 and, oh, is it? Okay, there, there is a small issue of Native Americans, but we won't go down genocide, okay. which you celebrate every okay, year I don't want to go, go down. I don't want to go down. We don't know, have no, a Native that has absolutely nothing to do with the topic at hand. Okay. That has absolutely yeah. nothing to do with yeah, the topic at hand. If you, if you want to have Colonel peace Lincoln. in the world, then you listen to Doesn't other people. It, sir? 
Doesn't it, sir? No, you can't. Let We've me tell you the something. Seven and a half if, thousand you, years. if you, you want to do come something down here. And you say, right, I'll punch you in the face, it's my way. Or you, no, we've been there. That's our patch. We've worked it. Okay, Colonel Layton, and I want to, you know, if Kian, you Kian, to if you'd allow something. me to ask Colonel yes. Layton a question. And we like to trade. Kian, if you'd allow me to ask Colonel Layton a question. Uh, well, Otherwise, we're not getting anywhere. Colonel Sorry. Layton, going to my original question, which got drowned out in the noise. Um, President Obama, does he have a strategy? You know, in my opinion, Imran, he does not. Uh, it, it is a strategy that is very hard to discern if there is one. I have a lot of complaints about the way the United States has actually set itself up in this region. Uh, it becomes a very difficult uh, plan to execute if you don't really have a clear understanding of where we're going. And one of the big criticisms that I have of the American administration is that there is no clear strategy, no way forward, not only in the Arabian Gulf region, but also in other parts of the Middle East, especially in Syria. And that is a very, very difficult area for us to be in right now. But the strategy needs to be refined, it needs to be worked on, and we need to have a very clear way forward because, as you can see, Iran is still trying very hard to work its way into the region and have a great deal of influence that is beyond what is naturally its, uh, its logical geopolitical role. Uh, Fahad Shalemi, yes. looking uh, at... Oh, really? Uh, that, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Fahad Shalemi in Kuwait, who, can you who hear me? Say, who, who tells us what our role is? The reason why you're failing is you're trying to strategize leaving out a country like Iran with its history. We have seven and a half thousand years history there, sir. There are contacts and connections and there are families. Seven thousand years of history that are very aggressive. Seven thousand years of history that are very aggressive in the region. region. Guys, both of you, We're I just want to, I want to establish if Fahad Shalemi can hear us. Sir. Hold on, both of you, I, I want to establish if Fahad Shalemi can hear us in Kuwait. Can you hear us, sir? <laughs> Fahad Shalemi in Kuwait? He cannot. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the two of you for the moment while uh, we try to patch him uh, back up. Let's, uh, Colonel Layton, looking at the money available, there were a lot of fears from those from the, from the camp who opposed the Iran deal, saying that, you know, between 100 and $150 billion in cash that would be made available by the deal might be used by Iran for nefarious purposes. But then the CIA and the U.S. Treasury both came out saying that Iran needs to invest around $500 billion in infrastructure. And it, of course, owes uh, uh, you know, current debts to China and others. Um, when you need $500 billion to fix the roads and to fix the bridges and to basically fix your country, why would you use that money to um, give to Hezbollah or, or give to Bashar al-Assad? Are we maybe overestimating the military aspect of all of this. You are because I think that's a possibility. Uh, Colonel, 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 Colonel Layton first. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> some... so, sorry, Kian. Colonel Layton <laughs> first, and then you. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Here, here is, is, I think there might be a possibility of overestimating, and the reason for that is that the Iranians, as you correctly point out, have significant infrastructure issues that they ha where they have to rebuild their infrastructure. Uh, in the estimates that the CIA and others have made, uh, what they're looking at, I think, are worst-case scenarios. But it is certainly true that Iran has sponsored Hezbollah and others throughout the region, and it will probably continue to do so. The question is how much and how far will they go in that kind of expenditure? Kian? Well, um, we have to uh, defuse U.S. terrorism in the area. ISIS, ISIL, for instance, um, before that, Al-Qaeda. Uh, we need to get some kind of structure into the area, certainly, and we, we need to secure Iranian, um, of Iranian people of Iranian beliefs, you know, like the Shia in, in Syria. Well, why should they die by the, by the thousands? Why should they have their throats cut? You know, we are tolerant of other, other races, cultures, other, other religions. Why is it that, well, we have to protect our own? You would do does the it, same. Does it make a difference, does, Kian, whether you, Kian, does it make a difference whether you're killed by having your throat cut or whether you're killed by a barrel bomb sponsored by Iran? Well, barrel bombs are not sponsored by Iran. I, I uh, resent that line of uh, questioning. If, first of all, we don't, we don't spend our money, we don't throw our money at Americans and the, the, the French and the 
uh, the Germans for equipment that we can't operate like the Arabs do. They can't even go second line of servicing with their aircraft. We have we, we build our own. It is not the most advanced, but as uh, the gentleman, the American gentleman, is, is well aware, they work. Colonel Cedric um, Layton, final point difference. from you. Final Defer point from you. We are running out of time. Colonel Layton. Yes, everyone. I think I think the basic uh, situation here clearly shows that there are still fissures between the Iranian point of view and the American, as well as the Arab points of view. Uh, so what remains to be yes, seen is we'll how much we can actually come together to have a kind of thing where we have an agreement in Syria and actually work forward for the good of the Syrian people. That is what is missing, and that is what really needs to happen here. Okay, Kian, final, Indeed. final response, Indeed, yes. very briefly, please. Well, as a matter of fact, I do like Americans, and my company is based in America. American people are absolutely lovely. Um, and I'm sure any differences uh, will be sorted out. Iranians are highly cultured, um, and uh, we prefer trade to, to war, and we prefer uh, good discussions to, to threats. Okay. And cool. once other people come to realize we are that civilized, then we can, we can sort some problems out, huh? Okay, Kian Mukhtari in London and Colonel Cedric Layton in DC, thanks so much for joining us. And unfortunately, I'm um, really sad that we lost uh, Dr. Fahad Shalemi in Kuwait. Would have been nice to have him chime in uh, to the discussion. But we lost uh, audio and then we lost the satellite feed. So that was pretty unfortunate. Thanks again, gentlemen.